Hey guys, welcome back to Xwop channel. Today our main objective is to learn about the complete task activity, how you can use it. So complete task, right now to complete any of the assigned task, what you do, you generally come over here and try to take some action, right, in the action center. Either you approve, reject, submit, right, or you review the data and approve. So all this you do by coming to action center, but there, there will be situations where you would like to complete a task without human intervention. Somebody doesn't want to go to action center and approve it. They want to create a small workflow, which is going to automatically complete the task without he manually getting into the action center. So that can be achieved using the complete task activity. Okay. So we're going to focus on that. Before that, to get into this example, let's create a very simple form. Okay. Quickly. So I'm using an input dialog box and here I am saying I will take an example of resource requirement. Okay, resource requirement. So for a project, how many resources are required? So here we are asking a question. How many resources are required? Okay, and somebody will give it a value. So here I'm creating a variable control plus K and um, I'm going to say resource or r count or resource count whatever okay resource count i am using a simple variable so here my input dialog box is created now after that i will be using a create form task okay i am going to use a create form task and start creating a task in the action center now to utilize all of this you need to install a couple of packages so if i highlight on this activity you can see uipath.persistence.activities and the uipath.form.library okay these are the two different packages that you need to install which i have already covered in my action center initial videos okay so here what i am going to do create form task let's give a title the title is resource requirement okay task priority i'll leave it as medium uh, task catalog how to use the task catalog i have already created a specific video on this so for the moment this is not mandatory i'm not going to use that let's open the form designer okay and we'll create a very simple form just to understand how the robot can manually do it so here uh, uh, we'll create a simple text field okay and in the text field here i'm going to say number of resources required number of resources required okay and here in the uh, data uh, the default value right how the value would come the value would come from the variable so the variable is r count so i'm using the r count variable but before you use this r count variable let me tell you how do you really utilize this now for this There is something called collection okay so here i am going to create a variable called in underscore r count and i'm going to pass this value from the variable called resource count so this all these things i have shown it previously okay click on okay just that ensure your r count variable is a integer type that's all okay so once you have created that specific argument it is going to pass the value to in underscore r count okay the same thing we can utilize over here yes all right so number of resources required for this particular field so you can see the moment we have created an argument it has created a field over here so we don't need this we are going to utilize it so I'm going to uh, move it to the top and I'm going to edit this. Okay. So here what I'm going to say, I'm going to say resource. I'm going to move that resource count. Now if you go to the data uh, value, uh, not the data, if you go to the field key, you can see in underscore r count. Okay. The field key is in underscore r count, which is getting the value of the variable that we have passed simple now here one has to approve or deny so let's change it click on this button and i'm going to say approve go to the field key the field key is very very important so here i'm going to say approve okay hit on save 
let's say let's create another button called uh, reject okay and go to the field key and here already reject is there so it don't save fine so very simple form has been designed let's save it now what i want once the task gets created generally let's say if i'm not using um, this particular complete task activity below if i simply run it what would happen first of all it is going to ask me uh, it, it is going to prompt the user um, as to what it is like how many uh, resources are required for the project okay let's say i'm going to say five resources are required i'm going to click on okay so what would happen this form the create form task is going to create a task right so if you go to the action center if you go to the unassigned state you can see a task has been created and let's say the manager or somebody has to come over here and he has to he has two op options approve or reject so so before he does that what he needs to do he need to assign it to self and then manually see that and approve it let's say he's very confident about uh, some 10 or 15 projects uh, the team leads have requested and he has a trust and he would like to blindly approve or he would he has already information he just want to approve uh, all the requests uh, that are there okay so how do you utilize the complete task which will be very very useful so what what i'm going to do it here i'm going to use the complete task activity to approve all those so let's use something called complete task drag and drop this so this requires uh, two different mandatory inputs one is the task id number and the other one is the task action number so all this will be in the output variable called task object so let's create a variable control plus k and say task okay so the variable is created now the problem is if you mention here task dot id it may throw an error so id is again the property of that object id so i can take the id whatever id it has created i can capture the id but the problem is it is going to throw you an error so how do you utilize right how do i utilize this this can be solved using a assign activity so let's use assign activity and here let's create a variable called task id okay task id variable i have created and i want to pass this task id to this particular variable so this task id if you uh, if you look at the task id is a long variable because it is a longer there are so many integers right when the task is created if you see there will be multiple so you cannot use int 32 let's use the int 64 for this okay now for that let's write a very small expression i am going to say convert dot to int 64 and what i want to convert i want to convert task id task dot id fine so i am converting so and another thing i have to do the task id variable which i have created i should select the int 64 for this so you can go for browse for types and look for system dot int 64 okay so done now after you convert this you can use that variable over here so i'm using a task id variable simple so it has accepted there's no error the next is task action so remember how to use the task action this is very important so for task action what are the action you want to take the what the user supposed to do the user supposed to click on approve or reject right these are the two different actions that we have given approve or rejected so if, if you do not want the layout you can also put it in the way you want let's say i want to keep it over here okay so now uh, click on this um, settings button go to the field key and see how it is written approve so this exact thing you need to copy all right so i'm going to close it save it because i made the modification to the layout and close it so what i'm going to do the same task action that is there i need to put a double quote because it's a string i'm simply applying in this way so there's no error if you see okay now the problem is before the complete task works it should be assigned to somebody otherwise on the unassigned task it won't work for example the moment the create task form runs it is going to create a task and that particular task will be there in the unassigned state 
now from the unassigned state it cannot work the complete task won't work so if i run it i'm going to show you what is the error that's going to come so it is going to act on the unassigned task id so unassigned task id it will throw an error how many resources required let's say 10 resources are required click on ok create a form task okay it is going to create now look at this at the complete task the action is no longer assigned to you error code 2402 because it is not assigned to anyone this complete task won't work so for that i have already created a video if you go to youtube and look for um, assign task expo hub you will find a very specific video which i have created on the assign task okay so this one how to use assign task in your path action center so this video you can utilize so for the time being what i'm going to do uh, for me to show the demonstration i'm going to manually uh, assign this task to myself so assign to self now the moment it goes to the pending state okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this id um, because i don't want to make it uh, i cannot make it dynamic until unless i use the assign assign task activity um, as i shown in that video i have to use the assign task and do it so for the time being what i'm going to do just to demonstrate i'm going to disable all these activities for the moment okay so i'm just going to run only the complete task and here instead of the variable uh, which is more dynamic but here just to demonstrate i'm going to use that 247 the same act, uh, action or the task which is there 247 right so 247 i have entered and I, I want it to approve it now if you run this there is something called task data dot json so let me tell you how the json file would look like um, so if you uh, i have downloaded it for another uh, uh, form where it had a name then it had it was asking are you joining the uipath training so he's then uh, he said one one means yes and then approve true so somebody has approved it so this is how a json file would look like so this json file can be an input but for the time being it is not pretty clear to me as to how that json file be utilized or what is the reason of having this particular input over here or how we can utilize so for that i have already requested uipath to see if they can come up with an example uh, until then we just get to know how the complete task activity will work okay so here uh, the id is entered and what kind of action it should take and this particular word is exactly coming from your form designer i have shown you field key right so if you go to the form designer and if you look at that particular button so there are two actions to take either the user can approve it or reject it so i want all that task to be approved so the field key for that particular button which is the approve the exact thing has been written in the in the complete task okay so this also you can utilize a variable and do it you can make it more dynamic but let's understand how whether it's working or not in this way okay then we can put our own logics so let's run it and i want the activity which is there in the action center which is 247 to automatically get approved without me touching it okay so let's go back let's see what's happening okay it has completed that uh, this has run so let's go back okay let's refresh this so you can see it has gone 247 let's go to the completed tab scroll down resource uh, uh, requirement 247 for 10 members it is automatically approved so you can see how useful it is but the question that comes to our mind rakesh for one activity it is fine what about if you have got multiple pending activities let's say there are 10 20 active uh, pending tasks and out of that you want to specifically uh, approve few items or let's say you want to approve all the item that is there on the pending uh, so what to do for that if you know only this kind of a specific actions are coming to you as a manager to approve resources so anything that is there in the pending uh, you want to approve everything because you already had a discussion with everybody who has created a task and you just have to approve it but you don't want to do it manually because there are hundred of this one so you want to do it 
automatically for anything that is there under the pending so how to design that workflow i am going to come up in the next video okay where i am going to show you how we can do that uh, here we have just applied only one task id and up and take an action so there we will take an action on all the pending items so how to retrieve all the task ids how do you put it into the complete task is something we are going to come up in the upcoming video so thank you so much guys for watching this we are going to come up with more interesting videos which are going to give you a deep knowledge um, into everything that I am going to teach you. A deep knowledge, you should know how to utilize various activities uh, because only the deep knowledge will help you uh, in your projects or you want to do, uh, you know, go for an interview for everything. Deep knowledge is required. You cannot just go with the definitions and attend an interview. That's not going to help really. So let's get into more exercises like this, like this and please continue to watch our videos. Please do subscribe and please do share uh, with your friends and do comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much guys. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.